All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I'll try to talk loud, so if you can't hear back there, just you know, raise your hand, let me know, or, or scoot up towards the front. Um, pretty informal. I just start talking and rambling, so nothing really pre planned. So uh, as I go, as I start talking, if you have questions, you know, raise your hand. You know, I'll try to answer them the best I can as we go through it. Um, a little bit about my background is I, I grew up here in Collinsville and then uh, went to SIU Edwardsville for accounting. So I got my first degrees in finance and economics. So I went and did accounting for a little while. Found that I didn't, it was okay. I could do it really well, but it was a little on the boring side. <laughs> Crunchy numbers all day, you know, kind of got a little boring for me. I'm a little more of a people person. So uh, as I went through, you know, life, I decided to go back into chiropractic. So I've got my four-year degree, you know, first. So whenever you go to become a chiropractor, you know, you go four years of uh, undergrad, and then you go uh, to chiropractic school, which is a five-year program. So you're talking nine years worth of schooling uh, to become a chiropractor. So I did that out here in Chesterfield, Missouri. Uh, graduated there in 2000, and then after I graduated, uh, I decided to go to Italy, and I practiced in Italy for a year. So we learned a little bit more about how the rest of the world does medicine. So that was pretty eye-opening and interesting endeavor there. Uh, then I've also gotten, gotten schooling in acupuncture. So I've got what they call a, a diplomat in acupuncture, which is about the equivalent of six, uh, six years worth of acupuncture schooling afterwards. So, so we specialize, in our office, we specialize in chiropractic and acupuncture, and we also do physical therapy. So. We kind of try to incorporate the best of all the worlds, you know. So it's uh, chiropractic works great, acupuncture works great. You combine the two together, and you've got even better better results with it. And of course, we have physical therapy in with all that too. So it in, you know, um, typical patient when they come into the office is you know, usually we see because of chiropractic we see a lot of low back pain and neck pain, so we see that a lot. Uh, carpal tunnel, sciatica, etc. So we examine the patient, we figure out what's going on, check the history, and then we figure out a plan of, of what to do. And in our case, we do a lot of the, you know, we do the chiropractic, which helps with the uh, vertebrae and the nervous system, and we'll get more into that. Um, and then we follow it up with acupuncture and some physical therapy modalities, and we get them in pretty good, pretty good shape with all that. Um, now on the other end of the spectrum, with the acupuncture, we treat a lot more than just you know, neck pains and low back pains. We also work with um, infertility issues, uh, you know, migraine issues, kidney problems, liver problems. You, know, you name it, we work with it. Um, in China, uh, acupuncture is their main medicine. I mean, and there's still today. Uh, it's been around 5,000 years, so you know they're doing something right. Um, so if, if you go to the hospital in China, you know, you're going to get some acupuncture. You'll also get some of the Western medicine now, but acupuncture is still very much prominent. Yeah. So what is chiropractic and what is acupuncture? Okay. Anybody had any, any experience with chiropractic in the past? Okay. You got a few. What about acupuncture? <laughs> okay, we got one, two. <laughs> okay, yeah. A lot of people don't know a lot of, about acupuncture, so uh, a lot of people are still you know, nervous about it, they don't know what it is, uh, so hopefully today I'll be able to enlighten you a little bit on it. Um, chiropractic, let's start with that. Chiropractic, they call, they call that a, you know, an alternative medicine because it's not the Western medicine of, you know, let's prescribe medications and let's, you know, we have an infection, we do an antibiotics, etc. So we're complementary or alternative, however you want to call it. Put that all in one big bracket. Um, so what chiropractic does is you look you look at the whole body. Okay, the brain controls the body. Okay? It's like a big supercomputer, and then it sends electrical impulses down your spinal cord, and then in between each of your vertebrae, which you've got 26 movable vertebrae from the neck here down to here, and out in between those vertebrae is where those nerves come out of. Okay, so it's kind of like electrical wires. The brain sends an impulse, it goes down the spinal cord and then out through those nerves. Okay, so that controls your hands, it controls your feet, controls your organs, controls everything. Okay. Um, 
if you get a pinch on a nerve, let's say in the neck, it's going to go down into the hands, but that's where that electrical wire goes down to. Okay? If it's down in the low back, then it'll shoot down the legs. So you've heard people talk about sciatica, uh, you know, pinched nerves. That's what it's all about. It's, you're pinching on those nerves. Sometimes you can get a pinch on there, and it doesn't cause pain, but it's kind of like a garden hose. You squeeze down on it, it works, just not 100%. So what a chiropractor does is they look at the spine and get everything back into position so that now you can open up that nervous system and open up those electrical impulses and now the body supports better. Okay? Uh, if you have a headache, a lot of times it's because the neck is out of position. It pinches on those nerves and that radiates the pain up to the head. So if you adjust these vertebrae, now all of a sudden the nervous system functions better and then your headaches go away. So we, we go more for the cause of the problem, what's causing this issue. not. Okay, you got a headache. Let's take an aspirin. That covers it up. It doesn't. It doesn't clear it up. Right? We work on trying to clear it up, trying to fix the problem. Right? So the nervous system is very important to the body, and that's what chiropractors specialize in is getting that all straightened out the best it can. Now, how does that relate to acupuncture? Okay. Um, we'll take a step back, talk a little bit about what acupuncture, according to Eastern medicine, you know, which is the Chinese. Uh, 5,000 years ago, they came up with the system of the acupuncture, and they called them meridians or pathways in the body, okay? So you have these meridians that start at the hands, they go up to the head, and then they, and same thing, it goes back towards the hand, towards the feet, through all the organs. So these pathways have energy that run through them, okay? They call it energy, the Chinese word for energy is qi, C-H-I, okay, qi. So this qi flows, and it goes from kind of like a river, so it goes from one pathway to the next pathway and everything's constantly flowing. Okay. As long as everything's flowing properly, just like in a river, if everything's flowing properly, then, then we're, we're in our best state. You know, we're, that's when we're the most healthiest and disease free. If you start getting a blockage in that pathway, it's like putting a dam up in the river. Right? You got too much water on one side, not enough on the other. Okay. So if you're trying to grow crops, for instance, you're going to flood the crops above the dam and the crops down below the dam are going to dry out because there's not enough water to flow down there. So an acupuncturist goes through and tries to break up those blockages, so now your pathway is functioning at its best. Okay. So the Chinese call them pathways of energy. Okay. Western medicine calls it nervous system and electrical impulses. Okay. So I think they're talking the same thing, they just didn't know what it was 5,000 years ago. So when you look at it from a Western medicine standpoint, we stimulate these acupuncture points, and let's say we stimulate them once here on the hand, it sends a signal through the nervous system up to the brain, the brain sends a signal back, and that helps to release endorphins and encephalons, which is the body's natural pain relievers, and then other chemicals that help the body to heal. Okay, so you're stimulating that nervous system, you're stimulating the brain, and now the body's fixing itself. Okay. Um, so how does acupuncture and chiropractic relate? Well, if you're if you're going to do acupuncture, you're working on the nervous system, so you want that nervous system to function at its best. Chiropractic allows the nervous system to function at its best. So, again, you put the two together, now you've got better results than you did before. Um, when it comes to Chinese medicine, acupuncture is only a small part of it. Okay? With, with, uh, with traditional Chinese medicine, you work with acupuncture, you also work with Chinese herbs, okay, which is more or less their form of their medication, you know, except it's all natural. You know, it's herbs and plants. Um, and you take certain herbs or a combination of herbs and that's gonna affect the body to you know fix whatever is that's going on that's going on with your, with your problem with that. Okay. So uh, so you use the Chinese herbs and then we also have other modalities that we use, uh, including moxibustion, uh, cupping, um, different kinds of, they call it like between now, which is like massage or stretching the muscles. And so we incorporate a lot of different things when it comes to, to the, the acupuncture Chinese medicine aspect. Um, with the acupuncture, we use, for the most part, we use real small needles about the diameter of a cat's whisker. Okay? And I've got a few of these uh, folders running around here. Uh, if you look on the inside, there's actually an acupuncture needle taped to one of those business cards. Uh, so that's what the average needle looks like. Now we've got some needles that are even longer, bigger needles if we need them, for depending on where we're working at and what part of the body we're working with. But this is the one we use 99% of the time. Okay. So we can put those needles in, and you put them in, 
into the skin and it only goes in you know, maybe a few millimeters. It's not very far at all. 90% of the needle is actually sticking out. Okay? Uh, that, that gives enough stimulation right there. If we want to heighten it up a little bit, then we can hook some electrical impulses to it. So that gives you what they call electrical acupuncture. Okay? So that boosts that up a little bit more. Back in 5,000 years ago, they didn't have electricity. So they used what they call moxa, and that's the moxa buster I was telling you about. Moxa is a, an herb that they use. They would put that herb on the, the top of the needle, and they would light it. It's kind of like an incense. So as you're, you know, when you light that, that incense you know, gets the needle. It doesn't really get it hot or warm, but that the frequency of the burning goes through the needle and helps to stimulate that needle a little bit more. Okay? So I'm going to pass around this around. This is actually moxa. So you can open it up and look at it and, and feel it. And you, you would just take it and roll it up and ball and put it on the, put it on the end. Okay. Yeah. Now, they've come up with different forms. This is what they call the raw form right there. Uh, now we've got a different type. Well, let's go to this one. Okay. So this is what they call a moxa roll. Okay. So it's taking some of the some of the moxa and then they uh, put it into this roll so it's a lot easier to handle and then we would, we would light the end of that and you can go to the end of the needle and stimulate it with just the heat of that. Okay. Now, both of those create smoke and, you, and you know, of course it creates fire <laughs> and we have to have fire to use with it. Okay. You know, so we use one of these little, little lighters here to light those. Um, but those, guy, those two guys right there are pretty smoky, so you get a lot of smoke in your room. Okay? So now they've come up with what they call a smokeless moxa. Okay? So same kind of thing, it's almost like a cigar roll, you know, cigar roll, if you want to call it that. It's real, it's real solid, um, it lights, it'll get real warm and, and like cherry red on the end of it, but not a lot of smoke. Okay? So kind of had a progression of, of how those work. Uh, Nowadays, we use a lot of the electrical instead of these because, again, you got the smoke, you got the fire, just a little bit more of a hazard. Um, but we still use the mocks on certain cases. We use it a lot on knees and shoulders and elbows. It works really well with those. Um, we also use that with <laughs> pregnant people uh, because you don't use electricity on somebody who's pregnant, so we would use the mocks instead. It's another, another tool that we can use. Um, then we even get the moxa into more in the liquid form now. So, so if somebody has knee problems, you can squirt a little bit of that on their knees, rub it in, and that'll help, that'll help the knees. Okay. Um, so that's more, that's more of the moxa aspect. Now we've got cupping is another thing that we use. And these are the cups here. We have different sizes. We even go down to real small ones, like so. Okay. And kind of what the way cupping works is you would put you would put this cup onto a onto a patient. Usually, I use this a lot on their backs. Okay. Um, if they're having lung issues, uh, you put this cup on there, and then you put this on here, and it creates a little suction. So I don't know if you can see that from here. I'll walk around with it. But it creates a suction, so I can't even pull that off my hand. You know, so it's it suctions on there. Uh, so what that does is it is it's going to uh, it starts to bring that blood to the surface. 